Hello for all. Thank you for your invitation. Um, I am Loyacono Francisco Leandro from Ushuaia Medical Center. I present you a study case control for smell disorders post COVID-19. Please write your question in the chat uh, and they will be answered. Chronic olfactory disorders have been reported in many COVID-19 patients. Only in the United States, one million people may be affected. SARS-CoV-2 viral particle persistence and associated inflammation in the olfactory neuroepithelium may account for prolonged relapsing symptoms of COVID-19, such as persistent smell loss. Olfactory epithelium has five types of cells, basal, sustainacular, sensory, Bauman, and stem cells that regenerate the epithelium every six to eight weeks, almost complete turnover in cellular material. You next can see slide, the green for the Next slide. Odorants bind to specific olfactory receptors and the olfactory epithelium stimulating dendrites of olfactory sensitive neurons. Their axons reaching the mitral cells in the olfactory bulb. Treatment tested as nasal and oral corticosteroid, thiotic acid, B vitamin complex were not effective in most patients. Only a small percentage improved, which could correspond to those who heal on their own, regardless of any treatment. In September 2021, there was a fortuitous, the fortuitous observation of a case of severe hyposmia on 16 months of evolution after COVID-19, which was treated with Fusimed B trademark for another diagnosis, epitaxis due to acute rhinitis, with complete smell recovery in the span of two weeks. We developed a protocol for the use of Fusimed B in the treatment of post-COVID-19 smell disorders to evaluate its effectiveness. The preliminary communication was made on December 8, 2021. You can see a dry Medwin publishers the uh, the paper the preliminary communication uh, sorry to interrupt you dr francisco but your slides are not moving you can hear me uh i'm saying that your slides yeah we can hear you but your slides are not moving like we can see only the first slide Mm. I think you can uh, do the slideshow view and then probably. I, I see the one. Well. You can see, can you see? Yeah, I can see, uh, yeah. Uh, can you do the slideshow view? The... Um, this slide. Yeah, okay. Well, Fusimet B formulation is acid. 2% plus betametasona, 0.1%. By emulsion, it has a more equals content in this formula with a lot greater fusibility. Design of study. We study two groups of patients with olfactory disorders post-COVID-19, cases and controls. Both groups 
were evaluated to certify that it had COVID-19 by rapid test and PCR. Both groups were evaluated for olfactory disorders by everyday smell testing. Results were recorded before treatment and eight weeks after treatment. All patients suffered from hyposmia, anosmia, and 25 of them suffered dysosmia. The statistical evaluation seeks to validate the hypothesis that treatment with Ficinet B in patients with COVID-19 olfactory disorders was statistically significant. Due to the therapeutic response, it is possible that the effect of fusidic acid and beta metasona may, be, may have been at the level of the staphylococcus and not of the SARS-CoV-2. Design of study, inclusion criteria, anosmia, hyposmia, dysosmia, parosmia, post-COVID-19, and normal smell before COVID-19. Others, absence of sinonasal polyposis that reduce or blocks nasal airflow, adherence to treatment, not having allergy to the components, absence of intolerance that do not allow compliance with the scheme, consent to the application of the treatment in writing form, and telephone follow up weekly by WhatsApp. The exclusion criteria, anosmia, hyposmia, dysosmia, parosmia, not related to COVID-19. Lack, lack of adherence to treatment, present of intolerance, allergy to the components, present of sinonasal polyposis, not consenting the treatment in writing form, and impossibility of, of telephone tracking. The pretreatment, step one of three, was the exclusion of volatile compounds from their environment. All patients were instructed to avoid volatile compounds that alter the functioning of respiratory mucosa. We gave them this written instruction. Avoid environments with these products, bleach, chlorine, including pools, ammonia, household sprays, saumerio, palo santo, smoke in general, a freshener, stove, aspirate of alcohol, solvents, Thinner, turpentine, nafta, acetone. Step two or three, restoration of nasal patency if necessary. In patients with reduced passage of air through the nostril induced by rhinitis, we indicated corticosteroid sprays as fluticasona and oximetazoline for a week prior to treatment to facilitate the progression of the physiomed emulsion. And the treatment itself was started intranasal directed application of Fusimab B and then patient self-application at two weeks. Intranasal directed application, I use the syringe with a dose of 2.5 cc of Fusimab B with six long catheter type K30 with blunt distal end to avoid injuries in the cream for plate. Intranasal directed application was performed only once at the start of treatment. I soft the catheter type by approaching it a source of heat for a few seconds. We can see the syringe, the catheter, with the blunt distal end to avoid injuries in the cream for plate and the application directly towards the cream for plate. Then the self application, the patient self application of 0.5 cc of Fusimab B at their home in rose position every eight hours for two weeks and every 12 hours from third and eighth week if necessary. The total amount of beta metasone applied was in transal directed application plus cell application for eight weeks, 16.8 grams. Total patients 
39 excluded 16 top patients who participated in the protocol 23 reason for exclusion did not do the treatment did the treatment partially one patient didn't tolerate the treatment patient that did not understand the instructions and poor communication between doctor and patients cases 23 and controls 28 both of them treated uh, with olfactory disorders. Cases treated with PCMED B and controls not treated with PCMED B. Groups by age and sex. Um, total cases 23, women 18, men 5, recovered. Female 15, male 5, and not recover, female 3, and male 0. Total recover 87, and not recover 13. There was no significant difference in the response rate related to gender. Between cases and controls, the results was were Recover cases 87, controls 17.9%, and not recover cases 13.1%, and controls 82.1%. The value of P was 0 0.001 by G score test. 20% of patients with olfactory disorders treated with PCMED B recover their smell sense after two weeks of treatment. The remaining 80% needed to extend the treatment up to eight weeks. Among those who did not obtain improvement after the eight week, an extension of treatment was tried in a small group without results. This recover 20 over 23, Cases for recovery within the two weeks, 20%, and 16 recovered between third and eight weeks, 80%. Conclusion The result in this protocol showed efficacy in 87% of the cases in which the treatment was administered. It could be the action of fusidic acid plus betametasona on olfactory epithelium that caused relief of cure of olfactory disorders. The action was probably enhanced by the emulsion vehicle used, which allowed the active ingredients to persist for a longer time of the nasal mucosa. Fusidic acid activity has demonstrated to be useful against Staphylococcus aureus. Due to therapeutic response, it is possible that the effect of fusidic acid and betametasona may be have seen at the level of staphylococcus and not of SARS-CoV-2. Anosmia hyposmias characterize the olfactory disorder of COVID-19. These symptoms were used to suspect the disease in association with flu-like symptoms, but also as the only manifestation. It has been reported the prevalence of methicillin-resistant staphylococcus aureus in respiratory cultures in patients hospitalized with COVID-19 pneumonia. The inflammation generated by staphylococcus aureus has been demonstrated through the release of pro-inflammatory peptides such as enterotoxin B inducing inflammation mediated by pro-inflammatory cytokines. You see the ICA activity was evaluated against 2002 clinical staphylococcal isolated collecting in use AIDS hospital inhibited 99.8% of staphylococcal aureus isolates. In conclusion, you see the ICA activity demonstrates sustained potent activity against this recent collection of US staphylococcus. The global emergence of methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus and strains with reduced vancomycin susceptibility have limited 
treatment options. For orally available antistaphylococcus agents, surveillance in the United States, in case 13, found leofloxacin, erythromycin, and clindamycin resistant rate with an overall prevalence of 47.9%. SARS-CoV-2 is transmitted through the human nasal mucosa via angiotensina converting enzyme 2, H2, and transmembrane serine protease 2, which are highly expressed in nasal epithelium. Both H2 and transmembrane protein transcription significantly decrease in nasal epithelium in response to Staphylococcus epidermidis, and was relatively lower in human nasal mucus with large number of Staphylococcus epidermidis. Olfactory disorders in the COVID-19 pandemic had clinically four stages. Olfactory disorders began in March 2020, strongly increasing their incidence and prevalence by September 2020 with periodic outbreaks. This occurrence continued during 2021 to decrease and almost disappear with the presence of Omicron. Stage one, we can distinguish two groups of patients. Group A, 80% of all patients with smell disorders cured without treatment within the first two weeks. And the group B, the remaining 20% didn't resolve the symptoms despite the indicated treatments. Stage two, at the most best, some recovered patients from group A lost their sense of smell again. In some of the recurrence, reinfection by SARS-CoV-2 was diagnosed. In others, it couldn't be confirmed due to operational difficulties in carrying out massive tests. In most of these cases, the smell disorders becoming chronic. Stage three, a smaller percentage of patients with relapses developed dysosmias. Two types of dysosmias were identified. Uniform dysosmias was the most frequent. The patients were able to smell, but most of them, of the time, they felt the same odor for different odorants. The rest of the odorants was, were either not perceived or perceived normally. Parosmias, the smell perceived of some odorants was unpleasant, rotten smell or similar. Some patients refused to eat and even didn't share the table with their relatives. Uniform phantosmias. There were patients who smelled an aroma that did not exist in the environment, but like uniform dysosmias, they always perceived the same aroma. Parosmic phantosmias. In, the, in these few cases, the patient always perceived the same non-existing and pleasant aroma. And finally, the stage four was established towards the end of 2021 and during the present year 2022. This stage is contemporaneous with the application of vaccines and the appearance of the Omicron. In stage four, the smell disorders decreased in incidence with few new cases. Only the prevalent case remained. Hyposmias and anosmias continue appearing with rapid recovery in a few year, days as the initial manifestation of flu-like symptoms as occur with influenza. Recent communication on this topic, the first communication in Medline Publishers in December 8, 2021, and then at the Argentine, at the 36th Argentine Congress of EINT uh, at Mendoza, Argentine. The bibliography, we can uh, see the QR uh, code to reach the page at, to see this. this. Thank you for your attention and end of the presentation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Francisco. That was a wonderful presentation.